looking, just looking at this going, okay, you got a Doom. That's nice up against the Enchantress, probably more than anything else. Because uh, the early is just going to be a problem for him. I actually get a Venomous Core coming out here from Invictus Gaming. Uh, yeah. It's got to be the Enchantress. There's no way that Dude, one of you. No, it's not. It's, it's definitely not a support. Uh, no. that being then again, said, he played the Core when he played it. <laughs> yeah, 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 he a Core. Did. Yeah, he played it the one he did, so... Um, I was going to say that there was a possibility that um, LGD changed up their lens a little bit and um, run instead of the offlane Doom, rather than the um, run with a one position star, because it's been really popular in China. And depending on what IG pick up this uh, last pick here, I, I wouldn't feel as assured with a, a Centaur one position. Centaur one position is one of those things where you just like, you pick up your Blink Tiger and then you just roam around the map. And Skywrath Mage is one of the perfect yep. heroes to roam around with, but... Um, this game, it feels like it's going to be a little bit more passive, and they just need to focus on farming. Yeah. Well, it's in July playing the Centaur, so yeah, yeah exactly. You're, you're going to have him as the old player. And if you guys have never watched the IG vs LG matchups, and you always have trouble remembering who's on what lane, it's just June and July. Yeah. That's the easiest way to work it out. Uh, as far as our lanes go, June will be heading down to the bottom lane, so he'll be taking a Venomans into the safe lane and farming up as much as he possibly can. Chuan will try and control the jungle a little bit and keep LGD repelled or just basically influence the lanes as much as possible. Ferrari 4-3-0. Faces Floyd mid. This is something that still hasn't gone over to the Western scene, uh, I don't think at all, but the Faces Void mid is something that is consistently run still in China. Um, and it works. I mean, he's he if he's a tanky enough hero to pull off off lane, he sure as hell can pull off the mid lane as well. So it's just it's just treating it the same way. You just try and farm up where you can. Try not to take too much harassment. You're tanky enough to maybe survive through certain ganks. And um, in general, they're going to be focusing on running their dual lanes here. As you could see, LGD already ran into the enemy jungle and set up some early wards. Mm -hmm. um, so this camp is blocked out right now by the counter ward. They also have a this ward right here, which doesn't actually block any camps, as the hard camp ends about right here. Um, but it will get them some really good vision where the one is running around with the Enchantress, and when he's missing, a potentially ganking up the middle lane. I'm actually surprised, like, okay, I can understand the, uh, the void in the middle lane, but at the same time, like, you can always run a void up against the Doombringer with the Enchantress influence. I guess you're meant to win this lane more than anything else, and does it really oh, yeah. help? Because you got like Sila battling in the middle lane as the more flank. So CS wise, they should be rather close. And in fact, Sila's now going to win on the high ground. Uh, well, until Ferrari does that, <laughs> he's like, yes, I win on positioning, and then aggro switch. Don't get well, yeah, the thing is, the enemies are getting crushed. Oh, Sila, first hit time lock, and he had three creeps around him. This is a guy who goes like almost full agility and loses half of his life points with two hits from a Faceless Void. With the uh, Lich sitting there. Again, like, the, the Venomancer can't crush the middle lane. Venomancer can crush the Doom, though. And that's the big advantage, is Faceless Void will be able to make any lane kind of work. Um, but in this situation, Faceless Void's still gonna pick up a good amount of farm, just like he would safe lane solo up against the Doom. But um, here we have the Venomancer, who can really put a lot of pressure on where he wouldn't have been able to do that up against a Morphling, let alone a Morphling dual lane with the Lich. Hate to say he's not really winning on the CS battle at the start, though. Uh, yeah, that may happen, but eventually his harassment will start overcoming the Doom. Should, anyway. Well, in July on this top lane, should flag the fact that uh, it is Luo on the off lane as this Razor. Being babysat by uh, by Kisbug. And Ruby's searching for the ward. He, he knows that they're being watched because his movement, which, when he's moving over to the pull point, he's realizing that the, that's the way LGD is, is backing up with uh, that. With, uh, it's just like something there, but he moves the uh, completely. So it's a very, very shallow ward from LGD. An unusual position for a, uh, for a ward on the lane. Very different. Yeah, probably specifically just to be able to make sure that it doesn't get countered, but also the fact that it's uh, blocking out the hard camp as well. Because I believe it's just on the edge of the box. So. That's right on the edge. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Give uh, a little static link over on in July. Just striking out a little bit of the damage, but now that's only a problem with, with last hitting. But Pete's able to find an Invis room, and with a uh, level 2 Skywrath Mage, I need the creep wave to push back out again and just come with it. 
Yeah, bad time for the, the creep to be pushing as this, this is going to be wasted. Uh, instead, he's going to try and go to the middle lane, but again, without a silence, you're not really going to make much Ooh. happen. Like you go, yeah. Oh, no. And the Gale's already going to start off, and that's Plague Wars, Poison Sting, the Troll Trap's going to be there too. And you know, he's going to wait with this Gorp Death. I don't know if he's really got enough life force for this. Oh, and sure. June, there you go, you got it. Do you think you'd, you'd be able to pull them off with uh, uh, a face of Void in lane? No. Unless yeah, you're it, pulling out some amazing time lock procs, that's just never going to happen. So, um, there it is. Uh, like, the Doom now has to always be scared of those kind of rotations. When he the lane is a little bit difficult for the Doom, but he can make it work thanks to all his extra regens. But when you have an Enchantress also roaming in, uh, the lane is so tough. And on top of that, the spamming of the Venomance rewards, you would feel like Yao would be safe underneath the tower, but you can always have the smoke rotation around behind the tower from the Enchantress. Well, it's not even that. Like, Yao can't come in close. Like, his, his regeneration, he kind of needs to have the Shrinkle Boots up and running a lot earlier. We might have to uh, hold our thought on, the, on that lane discussion. Yep. As Faith and MMR, uh, they're rotating up top. So, two points for Ross Blast, and then a 1-1 one, one, uh, up for Faith. So, the break already on the smoke. It's a uh, shift bump. He's going to get a good shot that can eat some pick up. And he goes on in July. So, there's no hooks on straight away, but the Frost Blast slowing down Luo. He's on a lot of points of damage. Pops four charges as well. And they have one last Frost Blast from MMY to get the kill. And then into the hoof stop in July. Well, there's no point in uh, direct attacking from the Skyrath Mage. He's a hundred and negative, a hundred and, uh, negative 112. Um, he killed the wall for one trade-off. So, that was, that was literally the best Chisco could do in that situation. He made sure that he wasn't the one being gone on, and he also interrupted the only disable that he could put a stop to, potentially, which was Centaur stuff. So he played that as beautifully as he could, unfortunately, just a really strong gain from LGD still ensures a kill. In July, backed up at the perfect moment. And that's mainly because of this observer what the smoke broke and he got he got a glimpse of it at the last moment. So the help couldn't get me. If they're gonna get this kill, they have to loop themselves around the back, battling directly up against Faith. And doing that, the observer wall again is gonna scan him out. That one what that's that's done so much work on this top layer LTD. Yeah, it really has. They're gonna try to around behind Siler here. Yeah, uh Ferrari is very early for that. Yeah, I think he's just trying to like kind of. Lewis, the man in back. trouble. Like he's getting double edged as well as all up on the top lane. That's where I saw the kill coming before. I saw Chuan going for anything, but Chuan also. Okay, I don't know if he was attempting to stack just then, but he could technically technically farm it up if he takes the wild wing. With an LGD stack, which could potentially be grabbed. Uh, couriers, couriers. I think over the top of him. Just by getting the pick up on Sila, straight off is available, but he's doing it. But yeah, I'm not a lot of matter. They didn't really finish the job there. I'm not quite sure why they're trying to make that rotation, especially with that uh, corner. Even in the is tough attack. against a Morphling, who can just start morphing in a strength anyway. So, yep. it's... I, I don't know why they attempted that, because the end result is the low die because of their rotation. Like, LGD saw, they rotated out, they went, okay, you're going to leave the Razor alone. We easily have enough hit power. Um, he's left solo. They need the Rubik there to be able to stop the Centaur's time. Was it you telling me that yesterday? It, was, it might have been Claire Boyce was telling me that yesterday. Um, during the two games. Basically saying with the Razor, like, Razor is here, you can't live unattended. You have, you have to have people there to make sure he gets big, because if not, he gets shut down. Like, we saw two games where Pycat played Razor, and he got completely destroyed. Bottom lane. Yeah, they're coming in for him. Yao is being initiated on by June, but then they instantly just turn into him. And that's gonna be June. Actually, going the way of the Doombringer. Yeah, but Razor, you need to make sure he's always got friends. If he doesn't, he can't stand there and farm by himself. He's got no stuns, he's got no control. Like, the only thing he's got is the fear of a high amount of damage coming out from, like, Plastic Field, and you steal the damage. Right. But all of this is over time. So if you've got a good ganking combination of homes, it's not that difficult to kill. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's why you always try and pair the Razor up with any sort of supports that uh, have, like, Rubik is a really good disable for um, a Razor. But yeah, they can't afford to leave him alone in this lane lane. Just at, at least let him pick up, like, a quick mech. Or actually, he's probably not going mech. It's probably going to be the hands of the Venomancer instead. But at least, like, drums, you know, get some extra movement speed or something, you know. Something to be able to defend yourself and get some stats when they do try and go on you. In the line. I did oh, yes. yeah, cross the ball. Here, cross the ball. Blossom. In the line. Look at the center. Oh, they just run over the top of him. Also, chip buff. Pick him up and throw him back. They'll get the zone up and wide. But Yao is also on the top line. Dooming over on the Rubik. And Chuan, well, 32 life points. He'll stay alive. 
And with Luro starting to steal the damage, Yao has no other choice to back up. And Rubik takes the first two. Meanwhile, he goes and moves two more lane. Faith is the one trying to deal with the bloody wards in the bottom lane. There's an infestation of that move, so as I... Just the Rubik dying. He... Why did they walk him out of that? Like, if Sala goes off, it's a kill. It's... Alright, from that period. Way over. Apparently, he tried to rock back to Morsosian, but I didn't see it either, because he honestly should have been fine. Yeah. We, we missed just... Yeah, that's good. Let's move on. Let's move towards the bottom line, but... Yeah, now we'll return to the bottom line. That's a level up Doom Bringer. He got the same amount of levels as the Venomancer. Even more fun, because his mech is going to be online before that, that the Venomancer. And this isn't with, like, Tower Gold or anything like this. This is just him. Tower Gold. Uh, LGD, I think this is one of their biggest strengths right now, is that the, um... They're able to read the early game, I think, much better than many other teams. For example, their rotations have been so much better than IG. Like, IG made that rotation into mid lane, which failed miserably and also left Luo alone. Like, LGD aren't making those kind of mistakes. While they're at a disadvantage, uh, disadvantage when you look at this lane phase, like, because of the fact they're running Venomancer against the Doom, and Faces Void is, uh, you know, he's just going to farm up against the Rufla. And then you've got this really dangerous Razor Rubik combination against the Dual Lane with their chances running around. LGD should be losing lane and phase, and they're pulling out a win solely because they're, um, their oh. rotations that are coming in front of Ryan Ferrari, he's been up here for a minute and a half, waiting for an opening to just jump in for a corner. And the one time he was looking to attempt it, Faith ends up just getting a little bit of vision and seals him up on the other side. Ferrari's made so much time. Not only, not only just waste of time for himself, but waste of time in that mid lane. Like, Chaw's over there farming up at the moment, but he had to back up a long, long way once he saw a double damage uh, silo. Yeah, he needs to be making a rotation to the bottom lane. Because um, they're getting to a point where this tower is going to go into deny range. So they need to make a rotation from Chuan to um, try and smoke it and go behind the tower so they can get Doom and kill the tier 1 at the same time. Um, but because he had to go middle, now he's rotating up to the top lane. I'm not sure if I really agree with them going top here. It's like they're trying to repair the damage that was done and make sure In July doesn't get to a blink dagger. Mm -hmm. I think that's the mindset coming off from, from IG. But uh, this just means that you're still going to Doombringer is getting fatter and fatter. His net worth is actually at 3.9k. His level to that is the Morphling. And the next person you're really going to... Like, you hit a 3.7k. But uh, directly after that, you're going to go to 2.4 before you actually reach another round G player. Tier 1 will fall, but that's solely because of the fact that Ferrari was heading to the bottom lane with an Invis rune, which was scouted out by LGD, so they just backed their team up. Yep. Uh, making sure he doesn't get caught by the surprise kind of deal. And there's no reason to risk any more. And now she is in the top of the it's half life. And for a lot of which has basically zero tower potential, uh, it's, it's a good thing for them. They're, they're now pushing down later on with, with team fight. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They definitely have a, a lineup that's a bit more oriented towards the mid game for sure, and possibly has better late game. In fact, really does have better late game. With the Doom countering out the phase of Void, um, and then you're just left with a Razor up against the Morphling. Yeah, that's not going to work out for you. So LGD definitely have some really great mid game and Emperor late game as well. So they don't need to have to worry about too much like tower taking. They just have to make a limited amount of tower G early on. On the entry and the best part of the pusher. Blue was harassing him a little bit, but he was backing up from the creep. He pushed the creep out a very, very long way. So in order to actually get close to the experience, he had to go, go over the river. And that allowed LG to pass. And well, they can need a replicate. That's a fresh one of the Lich. On the front line there for Sila. And Ferrari's not looking too healthy either. There's a tomb which does have his ultimate up and running. So if Yao wants to initiate, he can do so. He wants Ferrari, as you were saying before. Just remove the corner fr from the uh, from the play. It might be worthwhile taking out the Venomancer. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because if, if he gets his ultimate off right now, like that's more of a problem for, for LG. But uh, they're waiting for July. In July, he's got Blink Dagger up. <laughs> he, needs, he needs life. He, need, he needs a lot more life. Yeah, he TP'd back to base. It was uh, a different TP to mid. 
Uh, so he's gonna have to run his way out with the Trenkle Boots. They still should have enough defense, especially with the Lich Armor extending the tower's life points here. They, this the blink dagger was the only thing they needed to keep secret. If they TP him straight away, like it weren't sure. Okay, yeah. Now sentry wards that smoke up. They're trying to loop themselves around in case they are sword up on top of the cliff, which there actually is. So if it didn't smoke right now. Would have been visible. All done. Snub ledge. Didn't be fled. Good and dead. Primary targets and didn't even have to use the tomb. They knew exactly what they wanted, and the mid tower. Well, the blade wards just out of range, and now it's gonna be killed off. Honestly, I think that mid team fight was to determine the game for me. Like, that's how important I felt that mid team fight was going to be. They didn't actually have much of a clash, but the game result is still favorable. They killed, they denied the tower, and they followed the master. That's really huge. Indeed, the tower gold is really important here for IG. We have heroes that are falling behind. Like, Ferrari doesn't have a whole lot of farm right now. Razor has been ganked up uh, several times here. He's died three different times, and he's still behind the face's void when it comes to net worth. The only hero is actually on fine. Is Venom. in a lot of trouble right now. Uh, <laughs> in July, because the blink is on. Like one of those horses with the sides. Uh, look down the track. Uh, they're coming to the T1 down the bottom lane. In July, just had a smoke breath. Blinders. Blinders? They call them blinders. Right. I don't want to call them blinkers, but they wouldn't be blinkers. Uh, uh, I like it. He's being slowed down a little bit. He's been hit by the gale. It is actually a level 2, so for once there's some damage coming out from Venom Scale. But Sala just wave forms away. And the trade off is LGD is just forced to the bottom lane. Yeah, they can make a tier 1 tower trade like this, it's Dyer's perfect for LGD. Ferrari could have actually Radiant's tried to trade up to the mid tower, he's walking attack. up to, towards the top, like he's turning around now, and then the TP comes in to stop him. Because fairly certain he wants to battle up against that top plane and see whoever defends it, but Sila, in fact, he the man up on that top and he TPs fallen. into the pit. That, that in itself should fly to the next game, because this too much on top lane, there will be no contest. Oh, However, Chuan, well, Round two, man. One second till blink. In July, of cooldown. Feels a little bit like Deja Vu, just a slightly different location. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't really know what the game plan attack. is here for IG. If they wanted to continue to go for this push, they needed enchantress to go top of them, just five minutes. They go for the tier twos, and then they could maybe make a fair push because LGD's push isn't that strong. Mm -hmm. they, they can't really push fast. They, they will go for the tier one power trade, so it's better just to go all in and go for the tier twos. So you can take the tower back and they can them. So, five hundred again. Going on June, they use the center rolling to make sure they can keep up. The orb attack damage is not enough. He lives on 77 Radiant life points, having to take charge and to make charge to keep him alive. Look at this, you got that better medicine can kill also. Inchai doesn't want to come back in for Rory. He only catches the two map, and this one will tap into the lid hole. Inchai would have jumped in the mech at the right time. Look, he can stay alive. The Kurno is morphed. And Schwann is dying currently under the two. And we have double kill for Inchai as he commits with the double edge. I'll sleep away from the style for the last one. Four, not going to be changed. He still wants the last right click. He doesn't defeat that. Strike off, though. And he's going to be forced back, but still, that was almost a wipe. If they got the Rubik, that actually would have been a wipe. Because the Venomancer was the first to die in the fight. Uh, no. no. Oh, he didn't die. He no. got out. He, uh, he got doomed. Yeah, he got out He got out in low life. He got out in low life. That's right. But um, so much of that, a, a really small play, but really important thing, silencing up the Rubik there. Uh, absolutely has caused the team fight to go out so long and they didn't just get free pick up the Doom. Because he didn't see Zyla stopped him from telekinesising. The, uh, the Doom, I mean, it was too late in this really awkward position where LG are able to defend with that Chain Frost, which was just beautiful, by the way. I mean, you don't normally see really good Chain Frost, but MMY pulled out one hell of a one there with the uh, Creep now being in the side of the atmosphere with the Faces Void. Well, right now, man, I don't think anyone, when they do this game, like, for people who weren't watching LGD match before, mm. for getting to VG Gaming, I know VG Gaming is looking really strong, but attack. you would think that would crush your spirits a little bit. But right now, LGD are 11 1 over a Victor's game. They're going for a kill over on Schwan, so again, off the Mystic Fire. Rinse and repeat. Um, finding the just finding the Enchanter is out of position again. Yeah, it, well, I, honestly, I think that LGD is the third best uh, team in China right now. 
so I, I actually thought they could test match. That means that means there's a very, very big gap between VG Gaming and NLGD. It became me looking way better than anybody else now. Uh, and I think ILGD just also made that bad. Possibly. Possibly. They, they just, they, I think looking at Atlanta, who's just like, they kind of got the balls, which happens a lot in this meta, so... But those really one-sided games don't necessarily tell the full story. Oh, this might not be telling a full story, but it's definitely one IG doesn't want to read again. It's uh, 12 to 1 now in favor of LGD. They take Roshan, 17 minutes and in a bit into the game. So, and they get more protect them all players. Basically better pick up Link and Pure as well. And he's the choice if he wants, he doesn't actually build that Link He's got so much money at the moment. He could even just leave a casual perseverance Invisibility. and go into the E-Blade. Just go straight for pop damage. Might be a little bit concerned though about the lack of stats on him. Like, probably something which he would be searching for is just that ult or buff. LGD, they're gonna build a... Uh, this is just them playing a farming game. Like, as long as they don't get caught by IG, they really can't lose this game because They've already lost all the, the tier 1 powers available for IG to take. They can't really go to tier 2, so they have to go for Pegos first. And LG knows that they're kind of really well spread. It means that if IG go for a smoke game or something like that and find a hero or two, they're not actually really going to be able to capitalize off of it that much because the every bit of damage that is done economy-wise is going to be mitigated by the fact the other half of the LGD squad is going to farm up the other. Oh, they got Yao! Ferrari will commit the ultimate to make sure that Yao will go down, but there's still Mech as well as, uh, Spock Dirt Dirt. Man, up the score, that's going to be the He's hitting them hard, the war stop! They almost killed themselves on that one! Oh my god, but look at this, look at the top lane. Yeah, they're coming. Lua. And July's too far away. Yeah. But still, the important thing is, if the Doom dies there, even if they didn't get those hero kills, would obviously make the Doom death really worth it. But even if the Faces Void Rubik didn't die in that situation, he still would have claimed the Tier 1 tower at the top lane. And so it's still actually favorable for LTD when you look at it from a economy perspective. Attack. So I love the fact that IG just went for the smoke game because it illustrates what I was talking about perfectly. That you gank up one Radiant side, you have to go for a smoke game here, and you try and take some map control. LTD are so spread out, and especially with the Morphling pickup, like, Siler's Morphling is, is incredibly good. He always finds opening for farm, and he's pushing in that top lane. He will take the tower when you try and gank up bottom lane. Yep. And that tower is toast. So, 9.8k net worth over on a Morphling, 20 minutes into the matchup. And overall, 12,000 experience going the way of LGD. On, as main, same for net worth advantage. They're a long, long way ahead, and this Venomancer no, is this now the attempt to try and survive up against the up against the Lich ulti by building a pipe for your team? <laughs> it looks like it's necessary, man. I don't know how MMY is finding these openings for Chain Frost, but <laughs> Come on. There, were, there were three, four heroes standing all next to each other, man. Yeah, well, it's, it's just like normally, like teams are aware of these things. It's, it's like Chrono boys, let's go in. Oh boys! <laughs> Like the last one was kind of expected. Uh, it was going to be a good chain cross just because MMY's positioning here, where Enchantress is standing, was so beautiful, right? It was it was such a good spot to sit there and wait for the prime opportunity. That came as a surprise. That time, uh, I would say the surprise was a little bit less than it. It's more on IG's fault for not spreading out. Yeah. It was IG thinking quickly, let's get this kill. We need everybody yeah. to kill off the Doombringer. If they didn't have everybody there, they wouldn't have killed off the Doombringer anyway. Mm. The downside for, like, like heroes like Rubik is he walks in and out of all the abilities he wants to steal he got Devour. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if he at least had Scorched Earth he would have been a potential to survive through that. And, and there we see the true strength of the Lich, which isn't necessarily Chain Frost, though that obviously has proven to be an amazing ability in this game, but I think from a drafting perspective you look at it more about the armor. And yes. how good that is versus both Razor as well as Faces Void, who are primarily physical damage dealers who, uh, well, in the Razor's case, actually has some minus armor to apply. But that is completely like Yahweh's beat right now. He's 28 armor when he has this frost armor on him, plus an attack speed slow on whoever's hitting him. So you cannot kill this guy. He's got a mech as well to be able to apply to himself. So that's an extra bit of armor. And then, like, Scorch Earth and all the region he gets from there. He's got a Sheevas Guard of the Courier, which has now arrived. So 22 minute Sheevas. Even more attack speed slow coming down. 
I, I don't know how I can even ban this. The black wall is also... Jim keeps throwing these things on the front line. I'm just sure before I... Uh, yeah, you see him. Uh, normally, like, you think you put the bloody wall in the town, you drag the creep wave back and deeper into your territory, which is an easier place to defend. Um, with the bloody walls being that deep, like, the tower can't stop the but you still keep your DPS there. Yeah. But in this case, he keeps putting them very, very far forward, so they're already attacking into LGD. And now LGD are actually making carrying with the Now they realize the stuff is ready there, and then all the stuff is the enemy. Jew will get the easy off, but they first are off with some in and round. They can't really find exactly where they go, but yeah, he's still able to get that Shiva set off. And Chuan will go down. The Vertical Corona will actually be using quite nicely here. Get the other sky around the main, but he knows he can't get off. Yeah. So backed up, and Lua was also doomed up. So he wasn't wanting to overthink his welcome. The tier 3 tower in the bottom lane is 4th, but if anything else really goes with it, let's have a question mark on that with uh, the core still up. But no Chrono, maybe they do Suki push. Now, looks like they really want to use this Aegis from Siler. It's 20 seconds left on it, either way, he's going to regen back up. Going to shit. Like, he's going to jump if that's going to be the case. And now, Corona, not available, he gets a time lock on, yeah. Just put it back, and then Siler, way more mini, going for Ferrari. Look at Phoenix, he is down, and there's the Aegis, he's more trigger. It was on the last moment, too. Now the Lich Holder going to bounce into the freeway, back down to Luo. But Siler, back the wall, the Lich will get picked off. Chuan on the back lines here, battling up uh, up against Yao. And Yao trying to turn back in the engagement. The Mystic Flow fell off target. Uh, but Zyla, he's just shotgunning. Not that shotgun, that's just an amazing adaptive strike. Comes down, and in July! Big stop off. All the way for the way. And one of the times the and Yao with a double. The fifth man, sir. And also, this one still dying back in base to the sky. He had all the points the whole way. It probably would have been just before he reached the fountain too, so he probably would have reached end up if you was just given another half a second or more, but and this is looking like game, Toby. Uh, ID, they just had a really long drawn out team fight and they involved multiple lives for some heroes, and they still couldn't push LGD out of the fight. And this is again, LGD, they're perfectly acceptable moving into the late game, but they're still able to take a rack at 25 minutes in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of those meant to have no direct tower push. I, I would love to know the timer on that Aegis, though. I really thought Morphling was going to die permanently there. It would have actually given us a five-second countdown uh, if it was there. Oh, okay, so so it, I, I, it, it, in that case, it was on second six, man. That was so <laughs> close to being done. I really thought Morphling was actually going to back up and just wait for the regen, because the worst thing you could do is actually go in, have the, the expire, the regen goes off, and you immediately get hit by something. True, true. But luckily, the beautiful thing about the regeneration of the Aegis Immortal is it doesn't actually get broken. So the only way you would uh, you would lose it is if you regen and keep up with the amount of damage that comes out from my team. You can still be dead for pull real quick, dude. Yeah. Um, oh, Silas looking at Toss. Bomb, bomb, bomb. The E blade has arrived, baby. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is uh, not a good, good thing to be in. And Evan, why? He did, this guy's even picked up a blink dagger. You want good positioning for a chain frost? He's gonna have it now. And they could consider going on him. But the beautiful thing about having blink daggers, is even on your support here, is it's probably kind of shit. He wants to jump in. He has that in tank with the Kronos. Kronos simply becomes away. Because the animation time to actually Chrono is, is too long. The blind left to escape. The main crash has also gone down. So the full racing has been completed for LGD at the bottom. But uh, this 422 dream is on the way. The 420 dream. Uh, yeah, LGD just gonna take down this last tier two. If they want to, they can just go ahead with the Roshan and take another Aegis. But uh, something tells me they have. Something. I don't know what it is, so maybe it's intuition, but something tells me LGD is strong enough to go uphill. I, yeah, I think that's all that cast. Maybe with the fact that they had like a 10 minute fight at the bottom lane, still came out better for it. That cast are inside, you yeah. bring. It's, uh, <laughs> and Doom, brilliant. well, it's a pretty late one, but he is going to get a blink dagger for himself, so he still now has that initiation. Here I thought he was just going to go raw tank and be like, you can't kill me, but... He's still going to go for the initiation, whether on the Razor or the Venomancer or the... Uh, how, about, how about Venom? Hold stomp! He's replicated. He's just... Wait, Phoenix, 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 Phoen
This is a scam. No kind of for attack. three seconds there. Buy back for him. No. There's no wall of wards. There's no poison over. There's gonna be no protected man. This is just the Stormers LGD going through the motions now to take game number one. Yeah, IG maybe just trying to draw out this game. Go, okay, guys, it's, it's a best of three, so let's just maybe. Like, we have a shot here of being able to come back. They, I mean, they have Ferrari. They have uh, late game face the Soy. There are possibilities here. It's like a 1% shot. Radiant's so, power is under attack. Out. It's three. Oh, the bear is. Thank you. The stop tower has fallen. The, the, the end of the game has fallen. I think I'm going down. So, for Rafi taking this one down, Mark is the trigger player of the Ethan. It's a back of the wall of the living. Fallen. And Ferrari, it's his choice to TP back right now if he wants to. They can accept the racks going down, the rain racks almost gone, but now it is. And the melee racks, uh, it's just a quick gale and fade ball. They're slowing him down, and now he's getting picked up. Where is his jumping? Where is his chrono? He said the rolling's gonna be used. They're trying to get break down too. He's almost dead with the waveform after the E-Blade. He doesn't die, however, the next charge kept him alive. Not to mention the sprites of Chuan. And the Lynch Dalty, well committed just to kill him for Ruby. Well, in July, caught out Luo. On the front line, Silas coming back in again. He's got waveform available, but he's not going to go up on the high ground just yet. And there's still just one hero down for the moment. I, I guess I'll call it patience, but Ferrari has just been sitting here the whole entire time waiting for the perfect opportunity for Chronosphere. I think he knows he has to get, like, a bar none, a perfect chrono. Yeah. And the Razor and the Enchantress both outside of those chronos, laying into those heroes inside, but he just didn't see the opening, so he never jumped. He never engaged at all. He wasn't. He didn't help put a single point of damage in that. He's gonna find the ironicness of all the numbers which could be coming up, but uh, a 4 3 0. Yeah, the result would be a. Uh, <laughs> See it! Next level inception of, of abilities and. Oh! Force up down by in July. I thought for a moment he picked up up and down with the clip, and now Ferrari, three man chrono, all of a from behind. Speed keeps are coming at the moment, and that's face arriving into the ball, and he just moves down Chuan. He's still got the skills that have been beneath the tech, someone out, but Yao runs in for the wall stop. But it's a good fight for IG. Ferrari's just gonna keep pounding into him. Meow, gonna almost go down. In July's gonna be there. He does raise it's the one who wins the spree. Doomed up the entire fight. The most wins. There's still 112 damage points. There's a BKB protecting Luo. He's lost the Centaur and it's only the Morphling. He'll break down Luo. And now into June. Needs a waveform. One second. One second. Waveform of Fulder. Three morphing up. And he waveforms away to safety. But LGT, that's a horrendous fight for them, and a perfect fight for IG. LGT didn't even get themselves to a choke point, and Sila, there's no more strength morphing available. 2.8k life points on through, does not matter. They will beat him down, and LGT will get white on the earth. Alright, there's your one percent shot here, right? They managed to get a brutal perfect because Razor wasn't there right away, but it was dang good. I am renowned. And Ferrari will even find him over Reedman for his efforts. I don't think they'll be able to claim anything significant off of this. They could try and sneak in Rosha. Uh, it looks attack. like he's gonna go for the tier two. I would really say Rosha is the ideal situation. If they can get an Aegis. Just because the Morphling is down at 47 doesn't mean LG couldn't stop Rosha. I think it's too late for them to do now. If they immediately went into the pit, I think they could have gotten that. And Aegis for Ferrari, or even for the Razor, it just means that Ferrari can be a frontline hero and he doesn't necessarily have to play so scared and waiting for the Chronosphere. Or also, I mean, just because he sits back, remember there is a Blink Dagger on the Duke. So just because he sits back doesn't mean he can't be initiated on. So, I think it would give them a lot more security for defending this base. Oh, LGD will be claiming this one. The Fumance of War will be removed, so IG, their choice if they want to try and counter it. But it's, uh, it's going to be a rough, rough ride. Uh, they're going for slow push. Karari is uh, trying to put them in the top lane as fast as possible. Lowly is racing. Push the bottom instead. Uh, he got his advantage before. Because he was running around that fight with the first floor. See, the bonus damage just before the fight started. Right. Because he brought down the tier 2 down the top lane. <laughs> now you got to the vulnerable, like, more. That had 2.6k gold up his sleeve. No matter how you really look at this game, You've so got to understand that LGD have so much power that one bad team fight doesn't lose in the game in any way before. There's still a full racks up as well. And they'd be looking towards it melee racks, which is already currently defended. Uh, uh, look at silent items. 
that's the reason that Void was in trouble at all there. Siler got himself a blink dagger. <laughs> what? That's a new one on me. I think and now he blinks up. He finds Chuan. And now, well, there's no E play, but there's a one form down. Chuan being slowed up. And then, in July, a little bit too late. The damage is already done. Chu's also going to get controlled up by the Skyrath mate, which means no good to ulti, no slowdown in LGT. And one big team fight for LGT. There's the wall stop going to lose. And for a really bad hit. He had the power to stop the attack. 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 And there's no Colonel available. There's no team available for him to do this game. Let's go, Ferrari. I man Chrono the Dream. He does not have Chrono. 50 seconds to Dream. Dream may not be, uh, he may be working up the road. Five man Chrono into a five man run down mid and take the throne. To a, to a, to a, to a let's all these deal from Rubik, then you have like the Frost Nerf, like the Frost Nerf. That could work. Alright, here they come. Four man smirk up. Five man alive, Venom sits on the back line. Just the first one we're gonna get revealed out. And maybe it's in Lua, over from the side, it's a free moving corner for Tassel. He gets the face, but he's still getting the face of the team. Finally got the guy right to me. Now that he's off, he comes in, hits the Ruby, he's down to the couch. And GG, the last Hallelujah play from the big race by, uh, by IG. It's a dog work for them. And this game is over. Can you one? Miss away from the team. No play by IG. Played this game pretty consistently. They didn't make any big errors. They just, uh, again, the early rotations that they made is what set them up for success. As soon as IG was stopped and they couldn't actually get a snowball going, they couldn't actually take these towers um, one after the other. They were they had their whole.